Proto or Common Germanic is reconstructed with two long rounded vowels, O and O. This continued into the older medieval languages like Old Norse and Old English, but maybe there was a third rounded vowel. What is the evidence for this? Let's start with a classic dialect isogloss in Scandinavia, namely one that runs straight through Värmland in western Sweden, marking an ancient western and eastern Scandinavian boundary. There is a set of words in Scandinavian that alternate between historical long O in the west and long O in the east. This is still very noticeable if you compare Norwegian with Swedish and Danish today, where Norwegian has Q and Bu, Swedish has K and Bo. Keep in mind that Swedish and Norwegian have undergone a back vowel shift around the 1400s, and that Danish and Icelandic has the older vowel sounds in these words, Danish K, Bo, but that did not affect the distribution of these vowels in the vocabulary. This border is old and found in the medieval languages. And that these are not all the words in the lexical set, but they are some of the most well-known examples. The isogloss can be summed up as following. Eastern Scandinavian has these words with the same vowel phoneme as the cognates to foot, brother and mood, original Germanic o. Western Scandinavian has the same vowel phoneme as the cognates to house, sour and out, original Germanic o. This isogloss is, as I said, very old and present in the earliest sources. It's sometimes explained as lowering due to a following a or inflection of w or analogy, but it's more to it. These words are usually verbs or feminine nouns, and they're also found outside of Norse Germanic, where there sometimes are similar phenomena found. In West Germanic, English cow from Old English ko goes back to Germanic o, just like Norwegian. German ko and Dutch ko go back to Germanic o, through earlier ua, like Old High German kua. Here, German and Dutch have the same vowel as Danish and Swedish, showing this isogloss within West Germanic also. The same thing appears in the word booth, that has the same historical vowel o as Swedish and Danish, but Norwegian and Icelandic have o in the cognate. Here, West Germanic agrees with Swedish and Danish, but not Norwegian. The root in tro, tru, bo, bu mostly has historical o in West Germanic, like German trauen, bauen from earlier troen, boen. But Gothic has boan with o or o, not o, just like Swedish and Danish, showing that these vowel alternations in these words are very old in Germanic. Even within North Germanic in Scandinavia, there are some interesting exceptions. Dale Carlian dialects like Elfdalian, Ushamål or Vomesmål have a unique outcome in these word sets. In Elfdalian, old O and O turn into diphthongs, Ua and Au, but most of these words mentioned earlier, like Buð or Bu, have neither, and have a monothong U instead. Also, the outcome of Ayomlat of this vowel is kept distinct as a monothong Y from ayumlauted o that became oi, for example by, tsyr, from this special o vowel, but moiser and knoita from the original o vowel with umlaut. Also, the vowel in nyr and lyda from iu with ayumlaut actually merges with this secondary o vowel. The diphthongization of long vowels in Dale Carlian is dated to around the High Middle Ages, meaning that these vowels must have been distinct at that time. These alternations of flip-flopping long o and o in Germanic languages dating back to the very oldest sources has sometimes led to variant forms being reconstructed, like for example botho, botho, or kos and kos. There are also unexpected outcomes of umlaut in some of these words, like how Old West Norse has bo but bör and Old East Norse has bo but byr, with, so to speak, flipped umlaut vowels in the same root. I have yet not seen a clear explanation for all these vowel alternations of long rounded vowels in early Germanic, but some common explanations are analogy, for example the noun bod taking its vowel from bo due to having a similar meaning. 
Many nouns are feminine, for example, sharing endings, making it slightly easier to also borrow vowels. It could also be influenced from surrounding sounds, like for example a or w in inflectional endings, or maybe vowels in word final position developing differently. But many of these explanations feel very random and arbitrary. You can might as well reconstruct a secondary U phoneme for Proto-Germanic to account for this, similar to the already common secondary E in Northwest Germanic. Regardless, I think this is a subject that needs to be studied more in detail in the future.